Okay, um, in this video, we're going to just follow up on what we said about the economic, the entry and the exit. So we notice something. We notice that this, uh, for the firm, let's suppose if our typical, if our, let's assume that our firms are basically all the same. So we've got a whole bunch of farmers and that their the farmers' costs are basically the same. So every, every farmer basically has the same kind of average cost curve. Okay, and then here is their quantity and how much this is both cost and profit. So I just put money. And then down here, we have our market. And so the thing is, we keep, uh, we keep, let me just, just to label this. Okay. Um, so we, we have our market and we have our average firm. And then what happens? So what, what happens is like we, we say, suppose we're here. So this is our demand. Let's put it a little over. There we go. Okay. So right now, this firm is, this firm is breaking even. Right? It's at the min. The price is equal to the min of their average cost. They're breaking even here. Right? This is, so this is a long run equilibrium. And then let's suppose for this product, um, demand goes up for some reason. Right? It gets popular. Demand goes up. So this one is, this one is, this first one we know is the long run. I'm going to put green, the long runs. So our demand goes up. And so we end up up here. Uh, I'll make yellow the short run here. This is just short run. Okay. Because, yeah, demand went up. And so for a little while, price goes up. Okay, I'll sketch it, but then I'll erase it. So a little, a little while, the price goes up. But then guess what happens? What's going to happen next? What's going to happen next is new firms enter. Okay, new firms enter. They push the price back. Oops, draw it a little straighter. They push the price back down. And the price goes back down to where it started. And we're back, to, so I can get rid of this because we're back to where we started. Right? And so we're back to this break even price. And then let's suppose something else happens. Well, then again, a bigger increase in demand. Now we're then the price will go up for a while, but then eventually goes back. Same thing. If demand had fallen, demand falls, push the price down here temporarily, but then supply would fall. Supply would fall to get us back to this long run equilibrium, right? And that's going to get kind of messy, but I'll draw it anyways. Um, so then supply would fall to get us back here. Supply falls in this case, and then we end up still long run equilibrium. So if we draw a line connecting these three points, we end up with something called this line is called the long run supply curve. And so what is the, because we just keep going back to this break even point. So this long run supply curve um, is showing the long run supply curve. It connects, uh, it connects the long run equilibrium where the typical firm is breaking even. Okay, so the, this means uh, the industry is capable of producing any of these quantities um, at this price, at these, at any of these prices. Okay, so sorry, um, because it's flat. Sorry. So this is the long run price. Uh, firm breaks even, and in this case, it's flat. Okay, so this is the, in this case we're assuming. This is, uh, we're assuming it's constant cost industry. Okay. So it's flat. So what that means is the costs are not changing as the industry gets bigger or smaller. So the break even point doesn't change. And in that case, the long run price is just flat. So that, that means it has a perfectly elastic long run supply curve. This industry can improve, can produce any amount or at least any amount in this range. And the long run price is not going to change. It's not going to be relatively rising or relatively falling kind of price. Okay. Um, so this is called a constant cost industry. Um, I will go ahead and give you one more example of an increasing cost industry. And then I think from that, you can get the idea of what a decreasing cost industry would look like. So this, again, this red line is called the long run supply curve. It's not the supply curve at one particular moment, but it means in the long run, the firm is capable, sorry, the industry is capable. This is the industry is capable of producing any of these quantities and because it's flat it means that the um, price the, the the price will not rise over time at least the you know the real price will not rise over time 
Okay, let's attempt to show, uh, let's attempt to show, we want to show um, the long run supply in uh, increasing cost industry. So, so in constant cost industry means as the industry gets bigger, it doesn't affect the costs for the individual firms. Okay, their costs don't change even though the industry is getting bigger. Um, actually, lots of industries might be uh, increasing cost industry. So, so this means as the industry grows, grows, it causes uh, costs to rise for firms. And this usually happens if we have some uh, fixed. So we started off with the other example. This have some fixed resource. So for example, let's suppose you're growing a certain kind of wine, and this wine only grows on some certain kind of land. Okay. So like maybe like a specific uh, type of land. So there's only so much of this land. So as the industry grows, the, we would expect the price of this special kind of land will probably go up. Uh, an example that I'm pretty familiar with of this would be almonds. So um, almonds are um, pretty pretty close to this perfect competition kind of market. And the land which uh, almonds are grown on, uh, as, as the world demand for almonds has grown and the industry has gotten bigger and bigger, the price of the land has grown. And the price of the land has grown in real terms, meaning it's grown relative to other things. So let's see what this would look like. Okay. So we're going to, it's a little hard to draw. I'm going to try my best. You probably know by now I'm not a great artist, but I will try my best. Okay. So here's the situation. So we're initially at this situation. I'll make this a little thicker. So this is initially our average cost, and I'm just doing the long run part. So that's our initial average cost. And so we're going to walk over here. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. So, and then there's our demand and our supply. Okay, we're going to start here. So we start here, and this firm is breaking even. Okay. So we're we're here, break even. So they're so they're they're breaking even, and so this is uh, one of our long run equilibriums. Okay, so this is, let's make this almonds. So then the demand for almonds goes up. And initially, uh, that causes the price of almonds to go up a lot. Okay, and probably the supply curve is a little bit steeper. It's probably a little more inelastic. Uh, but then what happens next? Well, people start to plant more almonds. So they plant more almonds, and this causes the supply of almonds to go up. But something else happens at the same time. Okay, so what happens? here is that the as the industry grows the average cost starts to rise okay so our average cost starts to rise and why does the average cost starts to rise well because this industry has grown so the demand for the special kind of land that can grow almonds is growing and as that happens that land is going to get more expensive and so our average cost uh, for this for producing almonds is going to go up, and so our break-even point has moved, right? So this our break-even has has increased. The break-even point has increased, right? It's increased from from uh, just to label in a different color from here to here, right? So it's going up. So now, yes, more firms will enter, but the break-even price has also shifted. So actually. They don't have to enter all the way up to that other. We actually only enter up to here, and now the firms are breaking even again. Okay. So in this case, as the and then let's suppose it happens again. The, I'm not going to draw it, but let's suppose demand goes up again and the industry grows again. Well, then our average cost for our firm is rising again. Okay, so the costs are going up for the firms. So uh, actually, I will draw it just just for fun. Okay, so then we get another demand goes up, but then now our break-even point has gone up. So so our break-even point has gone up. So this is, and so now this is again break breaking even at this new price. So our break-even point has now gone up again, right? Has gone up again, and so. In this case, the, the costs of this industry are rising as the industry gets bigger. And that's because this special resource um, is getting more and more expensive as we do as, as we grow the industry. So in this case, the supply for the long run is going to be upward sloping, right? And this is called an increasing cost industry.
So, and this line again is called the long run supply curve. And what it shows is, it shows what this industry is capable of supplying over a long period of time. Now you can guess, I'm not gonna draw the graph, I'm guessing this one is a little confusing and uh, there's kind of no way around it. Um, I'll try to find some other resources that might be more clear than what I'm capable of presenting. But um, one of the, you, for the decreasing cost industry, you can guess what will happen. For decreasing cost industry, what's happening is as the firm, as the industry gets bigger, the average cost of the firm is actually falling. Okay. And some of you might be like, that is super weird. But actually, um, for some technology products, that seems to be the case. Uh, so for example, as the industry that produces computer chips has gotten bigger, as a computer and mobile phone and industries have gotten bigger, the costs of their inputs actually fall because they're being made on a bigger scale and they end up being cheaper to produce. And so for those cases, actually, as the industry got bigger, the average cost is falling, not rising, uh, which is uh, kind of counterintuitive. So in that case, the long run supply curve will actually be downward sloping, that the industry can produce large quantities for the market for cheaper than they can produce small quantities for the market in the long run.